Hello and welcome to Just Hoops. In today's video, we got a breakdown for you as we're going to talk about downing and ice coverage in the NBA. Downing and ice has become more common throughout the league, and in this video, we're really going to break down the first, second, and third level of the coverage. And first, we're going to show you this clip to show you exactly what I mean by three levels of ball screen coverage. So in this clip, watch as Russell Westbrook has the ball. The first level is Andrew Wiggins guarding the ball. The second level is the big dropped in coverage. And the third level is the three other guys on the floor. So throughout this video, we're going to take our time to break down each level individually, starting with the first level of ice and down coverage. So in simple terms, the first level means the ball. In this first clip, look as Dorian Finney-Smith sits on that top foot. He gets up into the ball and really forces them baseline. This is key in icing and downing due to just forcing the offense to stay on a side of the floor, which is the entire goal of the first level. The goal is to get up into the ball, make them stay out of the middle of the floor, and really pin them on a side. You can see Matisse Thibel did a really good job there, getting on the top side of the screen and then forcing Dort to get downhill and then snake the ball screen. This whole idea of this coverage from a ball standpoint is to apply pressure and also force a direction. You as the defense are dictating. You're forcing them to not get into an action or to a side of the floor that they're trying to, or just to take away a first look or first option and also force them into the help. We'll talk about the second and third level later, but the first level's priority is to really force the ball to go somewhere that it doesn't want or to just a different option. The three key pieces of this first level, get up into the ball, sit on that inside foot and really force them to the baseline. Those are the three keys. And you can see throughout all these clips, each of these individual defenders do a really good job at forcing the offense into that. Now, let's talk about the second level of downing and ice coverage. The second level is the big man, the guy that is dropping. He has a variety of different roles depending on the defense, but in this first clip, let's see an example of drop to contain. You'll see Looney backs up with the ball, stays between the ball and the roller, and is able to make a play on the glass. That is a very basic way of doing it, and you can also see Powell do it here. He stays between the roller and the ball and is able to contest the shot late. This is just one example of how a defense can do it. Now, as we take a look at Philly here, you can see it's a straight up drop, protect the rim, deep in the paint, and then he recovers out to contest the short roll. You'll also see another deep drop example as Aiton drops deep, protects the paint, and does his job as a rim protector, and then recovers out to the pop of Embiid. These are just pure examples. This is another example of a deep drop, but you'll also see in this that the help came not from the screener, but from the big man off the ball and is still considered a downing and icing coverage due to the forcing of the ball. Now in this one, it's a drop to contain. You are there, you're containing the rock as they snake and you're contesting the shot. A lot of guys really packed in right there on a high level scorer. Overall, there's a ton of variety in the ways that a team could do this. In the second level, you can get up to touch, you can drop deep, you can medium drop to cat and mouse with the ball, or you can pinch, which is really high pressure. There's a ton of variety, and I wasn't get able to get to all of them, but I just want to explain how a regular and typical drop within these icing and downing coverages goes. Now, onto the third and final level, which is the guys off the ball. In terms of off the ball, let's look at this first example. As the screener comes and they realize that they're icing the screen, you'll see the gap is heavily loaded and the backside is flat. So on this flat spacing and then the gap activity, that's just one way of doing it. That gap was really loaded to the ball, making it tough for the ball to get downhill and make a decision. In this clip, the backside stays home, but you'll see that strong side helper. Danny Green comes in and takes away that block baseline drive and forces DeMar to get to the middle of the floor. That's another example of the third level being active. In this one, you'll see that as Maxi comes off the screen, the drop is there and everyone stays home. They're all in good position and they're able to make a play on the glass after staying home, being solid, and just doing their individual jobs. This next clip for the Warriors, 
you'll see Steph does a great job on the ball, getting up into it, forcing them away. And then you'll see, I love this activity on the backside. The strong side stays home, but you'll see the nail is ready to be loaded and the low man is ready to plug the rim. That is great help side activity by the Warriors in their icing and downing coverage, showing that they're willing and able to load the paint and really make things tough. This is another example of the help side being active at the nail. As the short roll comes, you'll see Moss steps in, really stunts at the ball, and is really active in that nail area. This backside activity is huge in being successful in icing and downing to force tough shots and to force turnovers. Now, in this clip, you'll see nail activity in a different way. He just stunts, recovers to his, and allows the big man to recover and make a play. In this clip, Olenek drives the closeout, and then they're able to stay in solid defensive positioning and really make a play on the drive. This last clip, I just want to show that you can also flatten out. The Suns did it earlier as I was explaining, but you'll see the strong side stays home, they're up in the gap kind of active, the low man's plug in the rim, and the back side zones up. Those three guys playing flat is essential in being a big time defense with this coverage and with this style of defense. So as a total third level, the primary things are the plug at the rim, the bump of the roller at the nail typically, and then the zone up of two away. In different spots and situations, the backside D will be utilized differently, but overall to be effective on the third level is to overall like just scram, be active, have energy, to rotate and be communicative and really have that awareness of your teammates. And lastly, you have to be really good at closing out, making plays on shooters and making shots tough from the perimeter. So to conclude this video, I just wanna summarize exactly all the points that we brought up. The first level is the ball, getting up into it, forcing to the baseline. The second level is the big dropping or doing his job based on the scheme and the player with the ball. And the third level is the whole help side. So I hope this video shed some light with the use of four very successful defenses in Dallas, Philly, Golden State, and Phoenix. And they're all really good at this coverage, so I hope that this video was able to inform you in a positive light on how this coverage can be successful and what makes it so successful. So for more content like this, please like, subscribe, and share, and we will catch you guys in the next one.